let's welcome Holy Spirit here. He's here, and let's welcome him even greater. Because God wants to do something specific here today. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do today, God. Oh, we welcome you. We welcome you to come into those areas in our mind and in our in every part of us, God. We welcome you to come in. And, Lord, we welcome you to expose, correct, change, do whatever you need to do because we want to say yes to you and we want to fulfill all that you have um, required and want to see happen. Lord, we welcome your presence and your power and your glory. Breathe, Holy Spirit, on these people right now. Let things open up in Jesus' name over the mind. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for bringing revelation and understanding, God, so that we can know what this new wineskin looks like, so that we can be ready, so that we can have our jars of oil and be like, like those five wise virgins, God. We don't want to be those foolish ones, God. We want to take our oil. We want to have our oil. We want to have the lamps trimmed so that the light can come forth. So that we can show this world who you are. Whoa. Jesus. Come more, Holy Spirit. More, 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 more. Because we don't want just a lovely message. We want something from your fire today. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. So I thought, Dan, about getting up here and doing this. Because, of course, I... I harp on those young adults and I say, are you praying in the Holy Ghost, guys? Right? You're way over there. I can't hardly see you. In Jude 1.20, Dan gave the first part of the verse, turned to Jude 1.20. And what he was talking about at that time was, he was talking about what happens when we're going through hard, difficult things. The Bible said that through trials and tribulations, we actually enter the kingdom of God. So he gives us strength, he gives us ability, he gives us the keys to the kingdom so that we can walk on this earth victorious. That's power. He's the God of power and might. So turn to Jude 1, verse one, um, 1 chapter 20, I mean verse 20. And when I was looking at this, I, I said to Dan, I go, you told him that part, but you forgot to tell him the other part. It says in verse 20, but, and I read from the Amplified, But you, beloved, build yourselves up, founded on your most holy faith. Make progress. Rise like an edifice, higher and higher, by praying in the Holy Spirit. So what is this praying in the Holy Spirit? It's praying in the Holy Spirit. It's praying in that language. Now some people here have that language and some people don't. And let me tell you, God wants you to have it. Mm -hmm. I am sorry when religious people have said it's not for you. But the thing is they did not know the things of the Spirit of God. It says by praying in the Holy Spirit. It says, first of all, in the first part of the verse, it says, beloved. So you're deeply, and actually look that word up, it means deeply and, and dearly loved. Do you know he's so crazy about you? He's so crazy about you that he would take this crazy woman here and talk to you. Because I am crazy in the Holy Ghost. I told him a long time ago, I said, God, you can do whatever you want with me, however you choose. I don't care if I look weird. I don't care if I look like a clown because I just want to see your kingdom come. I just want to see people get it. I want to see people come into their inheritance. I want to see the church arise like an edifice, higher and higher. You need this, people. If you don't have it, God wants you to have it. Don't let the enemy tell you the lie of it. If you turn to 1 Corinthians 14, we'll look at verses 2 and 4. When you're there, say I'm there. Yes. Okay, Paul was talking here. For one who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men but to God. For no one understands or catches his meaning because in the Holy Spirit he utters secret truths and hidden things not obvious to the understanding. So every time that you guys are releasing your prayer 
language, you are actually releasing mysteries into the atmosphere. It says it right there. Flip over to Ephesians 6, 18. I'm going to do a little water skiing here quick. Because I really want to get into what God wants to say today. We're talking about the armor of God here. And in verse 18 it says, Pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the Spirit. So if God is asking you to pray in the Spirit, does he want you to pray in the Spirit? Yes. How are you going to do that? He's saying he wants you to pray in the Spirit. It's part of your armor. It's actually the offensive armor. Praying in the Spirit is a key. So what does the praying do? Releases mysteries. Edifies and improves the believer's life. We saw that in June. Number three, it's an offensive weapon. You know what else it does? It causes you to be able to overcome temptation. Did you know that? Where your spirit actually rises up and says, no! So my question is, your spirit man, how big is it? How big is it? How big is your spirit man? It says in Ephesians 6, Verse 10. Be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Wow. You are united to God but through your spirit. Wow. Be strong. Be empowered through your union. Draw your strength from him. So those times you're tired and you have to do something. He gives you strength to do it. You overcome. You actually overcome. Draw your strength for him. That strength which his boundless might provides. And they talked about putting on the whole armor of God. And I thought, wow, God. So when my spirit man is strong, I can say no to temptation. I can. So how do we build our spirit man? By praying in the Holy Ghost. By praying in those, that prayer language. And the more you use it, the great, the bigger your spirit man becomes. Every time you worship, every time you praise, every time you do something for God, your spirit man gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Your prayer, that prayer language, that praying in the Holy Ghost releases angelic. Anybody need angels? I do. It releases the angelic. In Psalm 139, verse 16, it, it, uh, God talks about a book that is written about you. He has a book that he has written all about your life. And when you pray in tongues, the angels go, huh? And it releases your future, your destiny. That's good news. That's good news. Your spirit man becomes strong. And a holy alignment happens. You know, like we're spirit, soul, and body. We know that, right? We're spirit, soul, and body. Hey, I want to turn to John 3, verse 3. Does everybody see the importance of praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues? Does everybody see where it's for every single believer? If you don't know the importance of something, you will not value it. So many of you are fighting battles, but you're not using the right tools to fight. So Dan, where's that thing that was here? So this is what it's like. If 
I want to put this in here. I wanted a saw, but he didn't have a saw. <laughs> I want to put this in here. What instrument do I need to use? It's a screw. I'm going to need a screwdriver, right? Okay. What if I don't like the st screwdriver? What if I go, screwdriver, I don't understand you, I don't like you, I don't want you. And let's say this is a saw, I'm sorry, we didn't have a saw. Will I be able to get that in there with my saw? Some of you are fighting battles with tools that God... God has said, this is the way, this is the way. Counsel, might. The spirit of counsel says, this is how you fight this one. This is how you overcome this one. I don't know sometimes how to fight. I don't know what the problem is, but my spirit knows. Yeah. So when I pray in the Holy Ghost, when I pray in tongues, it hits the mark. Amen. That's good news. Can you put that down? We don't sit in our car and just sit there and expect it to go. We actually have to put the key in the ignition and turn the ignition to make it go, to release the power. The same thing. Praying in tongues, praying in the spirit. Right, Hannah? <laughs> it releases the ignition. The key gets turned and it's like, vroom, there's the power. I can go places. And the more you use it, the more you get. It's like a muscle. Okay, back to John 3.3. I want to say that. So John 3.3 3 says, Jesus answered him, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, that unless a person is born again, he cannot ever see the kingdom of God. So that tells me, because I'm born again, I can see the kingdom of God. Yes. I can see the kingdom. I can hear in the kingdom. Because I'm born again. Seeing and hearing is your rightful inheritance. Encounters are a fruit of the new birth. A lot of people are scared of that word. Encounters are fruit of the new birth. So seeing in the spirit realm is fruit of the new birth. That's our rightful inheritance. And you know what? We can instigate it. We don't have to just wait for a sovereign move of God. We can instigate it because we have a spirit man. And in our spirit man is the life of God. The life of God is in our spirit man. So every time we're exercising that spirit man, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then your problems get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. If you focus on your problem or your situation, because that's what the devil tries to do. He tries to get you to break the partnership that you have with God. We co-labor with him. We co-labor with him. So he can, he can lie to us and say, oh, you're never going to come out of this, or you're not loved by God, or whatever lies he's telling. You're a failure. If we believe that, we partner with it and we empower it in our lives. But when we believe him, who, who loves us so much, like he is over the top, kick your heels, kick these shoes off and walk with us, and that he wants to pour out his goodness upon all flesh. And the thing is, the church has to get it together so that we can exemplify to the world. We have want to exemplify to the world that he is good. Hmm. You ever had it when you're reading a scripture and all of a sudden something lights up? That's your spirit. That's your spirit man. 
man. It's recognizing. God wants us to be not so concerned with the natural realm, but to realize that the spirit realm is just as real as the natural realm. I'm going to show you a scripture, and this blew me away. I was like, oh, dear God, this is good stuff. So i got to find where it is in my notes. I'm going ahead a little bit, but that's all right. Um, it's in John, so we can still say, stay in John. John 10, 9. This seems to fit here. Jesus was talking here. He says, I am the door. Anyone who enters in through me will be saved. So there's salvation. Okay? But it goes further. He will come in and he will go out freely and will find pasture. Going in and out of Jesus? No, going in and out of the realms of the spirit. Going in and out. It's part of the new birth. It's part of our inheritance. He wants us to know that we have access to the realm of the spirit. That we can go in and out. We can be in the natural. We can be in the spirit. He says, I am the door. I thought that was neat. And then it says, and you'll find pasture. And when I think about pasture, don't you think it refreshing? Don't you think of a place where you could lay down and rest and receive refreshing in your spirit? So good. There are moments that we are to be aware of that there is something living in me besides my brain. <laughs> this is the closed heavens thing sometimes. Because there's open heavens over us. Jesus did it at the cross. He said, it is finished. It is finished. Let's live in the open heavens. Let our spirit man live in the open heavens. <laughs> Have you ever had it? Think about it. When you're worshiping, you come in, I'm kind of tired, and this, or whatever, and this, your body's telling you, I don't want to do that. I had a late night, I, you know, like that kind of stuff. And you come into a worship service, and the presence of God is there. And then all of a sudden, the shit. Do you know what I'm talking about? Hello? Do you know what I'm talking about? There's a shift. What happened is your spirit just caused the rest of a holy alignment to happen where the Holy Ghost is Lord with your spirit, then the soul lines up, then the body lines up. It's a holy alignment. And right now, God is releasing in his church angels that are bringing about a holy alignment. And there's people, there's people, Lord showed me there were people that are wanting to see change in their lives, but they're not going to see change because they're not using the ways of the Spirit. They're not. They're going, God, just come and do it. And he's saying, I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything, every tool. That's why we need to be trained and equipped. That's why this place is going to be a training and equipping center. Don't you want to know about this? Don't you want to know about the spirit? The spirit, you know what? You are a supernatural being. You're a supernatural being. God put your divine by. You are a supernatural being. Whoa. So when you're in that place and you're worshiping and you feel the click and you're connecting, you're connecting with, with the Spirit of God, you're connecting with the Most High God, you're connecting with the Godhead. Do you realize that there's a supernatural connection going on? It comes out of your spirit. We're more than just humans. We have a spirit. And it's very important to understand this for where God is taking his church. Your spirit 
is the real you. Do you know there's people that have shut down their spirits? And God today wants to say to those people, don't shut down your spirit. I'm here. I am the king of glory. I have the keys to the kingdom. And I want to open that back up. I want you to say, oh, I'm going to release right now my spirit. And I'm going to trust you, God. And I'm going to speak to those walls. And I'm going to see those things come down. So your spirit is the real you. So you're showing up. So what does it feel like to connect with God? <laughs> what does it feel like to connect with him? It feels glorious. There's joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's a peace that all transcends all understanding. There's an authority where you can stand toe to toe with the enemy and say, get behind me. Get out of my way. The Holy Ghost is can you imagine a church rising up and standing in these heavenly places? It says we're seated with him in heavenly places. Can you imagine a church knowing who they are, knowing that they have a spirit where the, where the spirit of God lives and dwells, and that spirit controls them, and that spirit takes them places. And that spirit releases the presence of God everywhere they go. And there's supernatural and there's miracles. There's the realm of miracles, signs, and wonders. It all comes out of this. And let me speak to the, the, the leaders in here. God wants to release teachers and preachers that speak from the fire, from your spirit. To other people's spirits, waking them up, causing them to wake up to the light. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. That is arising, your spirit man, arising. Turn to Matthew 23, 13. I, I was like, oh God, wow. He wrecks me sometimes. He wrecks me. And I so, I said, God, I so want the people to get this because if you get this, you will transform this world. You will. You will because his spirit is going forth through you. I hope this isn't too much for you. <laughs> So look at Matthew 23, 13. I was, when I was, when God was speaking to me about all this, I said, God, what's the blockages? What's the blockages of us, of the church walking in their God-given destiny? What's the blockage? That's what he said. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, pretenders, hypocrites. Listen to this for you. Shut the kingdom of heaven in men's spaces, for you neither enter yourselves, nor do you allow those who are about to go in to do so. That's religion. That is religion. It shuts the kingdom of heaven up over people. And where you've had that happen in your life, the Lord's Spirit is here to break that. I know what it's like to be have somebody try and shut me up. <laughs> A lot of people in here know what that's like. But God, but God, Religion doesn't want us to enter into the unseen realm. How does it feel for you to be in your spirit? It's more alive and you are more conscious of that resurrected part of you. He wants you to be conscious of it. He wants you to think, wow, my spirit is strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So every time I'm doing something, when you come to church, you're
your spirit gets stronger. That's good news. That's good news. <laughs> the world needs Christians to know who they are in the spirit. And as a spirit, I can affect the natural world. That's how we're going to do it. That's how we're going to win the world. That's how the money's going to come in. That's how everything's going to happen. It all comes from the spirit of God. Your spirit aligned with his spirit. Spirit created this realm and it's the spirit that influences this, this realm. Turn to Philippians 4.8. Am I going too fast? Am I, are you understanding? There's so much to say. Dan took one of my scriptures in Romans, but that's okay because we're a team. <laughs> it says, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence and honor, go unseemly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there's any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Your imagination. Huh? Allow your imagination to see. Don't be afraid of that. How do I use my imagination? If you want to know what we have access to, we are going to have to allow our imagination to see something that we have never seen before. What do I have access to? How do I use my imagination to allow God to paint a picture of something I have never seen before and I have no grid for? Will he show me something and because I don't understand it, I'll reject it? Because that's what religion does. I want you to think about that. Because my prayer has always been, God, let me not reject your spirit and what you're doing and the things of your spirit. Let me never be so high-minded that I think I've got it and know it. Let me never feel, never be that place. God, keep me in that place where I can receive from heaven, where I won't reject it. And then I usually want to do is this is my secret. I usually pray in tongues and receive, break off anything that I might want to try and do that. Because we have power. The devil wants our imagination because he knows how powerful it is. Your imagination is a powerful tool when it's yielded to the Holy Spirit. That's why pornography is so destructive. That's why it's so destructive. Because you're yielding your imagination to things that are not of heaven. And you're going to reap the fruit of that. Does God still love you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But he doesn't want you to go through this over here. But he'll sit and wait for you. He loves you that much. The Bible's just not about information or history or even how God works. But trying to give our brains, get this, a framework for a different reality. A reality where it's normal that you can walk on water. A reality where you can put a, a, a grab a fish and there's gold in the mouth. A reality where you take a stick and throw it into waters. And it makes the bitter water sweet. A reality where the lame walk and the blind see. And the deaf hear and the mute speak. And the world sees the glory of God. Where, Pe where Peter's shadow. He was carrying so much. His spirit man was big. Where the spirit of God was allowed to be Lord and his spirit, his shadow, touched people and they were healed. That's what we're made for. That's what we're made for. Not, not trying to 
chronological think of this song. Too hard. Too hard. This thing gets in the way. Don't, don't let it. Let your spirit man. Grow your spirit man. What are you building today? What part of you are you building? What are you spending your most time on? Are you building your spirit man? When we get people saved, we're going to have to teach them how to access the spirit realm. Otherwise, they'll have religion and they'll profit nothing. So our spirit man, as we sit in God's presence, our spirit's communing with God, has access to all those heavenly realms. And if we purposely allow it to get bigger and bigger, and bigger, and bigger, and bigger, and bigger than my brain. Bigger than the trial. Bigger than the experience. Bigger than anything. Bigger. Bigger than the bad news I got. Bigger than the disease I'm fighting. The communion with the Father. Allowing, allowing that communion with the Father where there's a connection. There's actually a connection with Him. That's what we have access to. That's good. We don't receive it from the brain. Don't strive to enter his presence. You can't connect with him brain to spirit. <laughs> you have to connect with him spirit to spirit. And if you're not in the spirit, you're not going to connect. That's what happens. But he wants that connection. He wants that fellowship. And he wants it to go deeper than it's ever gone before. There's always more. There's always more. You just don't arrive. There's always more. There's always more. There's always more. There's always more. That's why I'm up here. And I am shouting praise because I know how to access those things. And I want them. I want them. I don't care if I look like a fruitcake. <laughs> I want it. I am hungry for a move of God. I am hungry for a revival. I am hungry. Uh, we have to see it. We have to see it. But we have to align ourselves with heaven. And he'll help you. <laughs> That's where the tongues come in. Do you know in your spirit you don't feel unworthy or fearful? You feel righteous joy and peace. There's righteousness in the Holy Ghost. So good. So good. You can usually tell a religious spirit they're not very joyful. <laughs> Jesus made our spirit alive and possesses us. He gave us a spirit that always supersedes the natural realm. So you are bigger than the natural realm, and you have authority over polluted waters. That's good news. You have authority over the polluted waters. You have authority over what comes your way. You have authority over what's happening in the air. You have authority over everything, even what's going on in your family, and your children's lives, and your grandchildren's lives. You have authority. And God wants us so full in the spirit that I'm not moved by the natural realm. Oh. That's a process, people. Your spirit's always working. It's never asleep. It's not limited to our body. It leads us in realms that we have the right to be in. The Bible says that kings are going to come to the brightness of our rising. What do you think that is? It's what is in our spirit, what we're carrying, the solutions to situations and problems. It's found in our spirit. I just want you to get, switch your mind and realize there's a real spiritual realm and you have access to it because you're a supernatural being.
Anchor point for our brain is a whole other reality. Changing the way we think to a new normal. The new creation while, up, while other way of thinking. 1 John 4, 17 says, as he is, so are we in this world. So we are modeling after, get this, a resurrected Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Right. We're, we're modeling after a resurrected Jesus. Not the earthly one. Resurrected. We have to model ourselves as he is, not how he was. Revamp how we see ourselves and what the model is. Develop an awareness of our spirit. Being more aware of my spirit. My spirit tells my brain the laws of the spirit realm. That you can walk on water. You can, you're can. you not limited to what you have in your hand. You're not limited to what you have in your hand. So you can trust God with your money and your finances. And you don't have to hold back because your friends won't have enough. Time. I'm so sorry. When we define ourselves as something other than human, we're supernatural beings. He doesn't put desires in us to frustrate us. So I really felt like today, I'm closing. I'm landing this thing. And where we have allowed our spirit man to shut down. Because maybe somebody told us that we were we got hurt or whatever the situation. Say, God, forgive me for shutting that part of me down. Or forgive me for not building that part of me. For building my soul or my body, my flesh. Holy Spirit, come in. Come into that place in my life. I want you to come because that's the real you. I don't want to hide anymore. I want to, I want people to see who I really am. Holy Spirit, thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That you have not left us as orphans. You have not left us hopeless. But God, you have given us things. And that you want us to understand. Let an understanding, let a spirit of understanding come into this room right now. Let people start to become more aware of what you have given access to. And that Lord, where people have even not built their spirit mans. And they've been living in the other realm too much, God. Father, let there be a shift that happens. Father, let us become more aware of our spirit so that we can connect with you and with other people. Father, let the walls all come down where people have built around their spirits because they've been hurt. And Father, let your spirit breathe life into you. Thank you, Lord, that we're supernatural beings, that we're defined by that. So, Father, thank you, Lord, for causing us to hear your voice, to see, and to follow you and say yes to you. And know that we have victory on every side. And that as we build our spirit, man, little bit by little bit, that our spirit man gets bigger and bigger and bigger and can say no to temptation and can say no to those things that we need to say no to and yes to what we need to say yes to. I lose your presence. I lose your glory. I lose revelation. Thank you, Father. I lose people on fire. I lose the fire. I use the fire to come and burn up all the dross and burn up all the religiosity. Every place where we partnered with a religious spirit, Lord, thank you for your fire coming right now and destroying it right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we say, I see you, religion. I see you, and I don't partner with you anymore. I partner with you, Holy Spirit. Let our spirits grow to be what you created us to be. In Jesus' name. Amen.